years, every Christmas, I got a Gary Larson calendar. I even had a t-shirt that had one of his cartoons on. But I'll start with this. The far side. Well, well, another blonde hair. Conducting a little more research with that Jane Goodall trend. <laughs> now we're not going to deal with that with the kids. But, uh, um, this is, you know, Gary Larson was, um, he, he was a unique individual. And a lot of his cartooning came from his childhood. Um, like his brother Dan um, used to kid around with him a lot, his older brother. And he was afraid of the dark. And he would do all kind of crazy things to him. Um, you know, uh, he was scared of the monsters under his bed and his brother would hide in, in his closet. And then at the inopportune time, he would jump out and scare him. And all of these things in life imprinted on him. And one day he was sitting in a music store working there and he realized that he really hated his job. And because of that, he's like, oh, I'll try cartooning. And all of these things led up to him being a cartoonist. So I'm gonna read a little bit just so I can get my facts straight. And, um, and then we'll go through the project, how I want the project to go in the classroom. And then if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to fire after that, okay? So Gary Larson is an American cartoonist. He was born August 14, 1950 in Tacoma, Washington. Gary Larson is the creator of The Far Side, a single panel cartoon series that was syndicated internationally to more than 1,900 newspapers for 15 years. These single panel cartoons were also featured in books, calendars, mugs, prints across the world. The unique humor these cartoons displayed became seeded by Gary's family life growing up. Gary says that his family had a morbid sense of humor and he was influenced by the paranoid sense of humor of his older brother, Dan. That's what I was referring to. Dan would play pranks on Gary by taking advantage of his fear of monsters under the bed. Dan would wait in the closet at the right moment and pounce. Gary said, Dan would scare the hell out of me whenever he could. Dan was also a major influence for Gary developing his passion for scientific knowledge. So if you will go and look at some of these cartoons, he does a lot of animal stuff, like animal behavior, but he, he humanizes them all. So it, it's kind of cool. He uses that as, as a bit of his humor. But Dan really um, developed his, his passion for scientific knowledge. Gary and his brother would catch animals in Puget Sound and then put them in terrariums and aquariums in the basement. They would build little ecosystems. And, you know, today Gary Larson is an active environmentalist. He says, protecting wildlife is at the top of my list. Um, this interesting career path started when he was working in a music store, as I said, and he realized how much he hated his job. He decided to try cartooning, and in 1976, he drew six cartoons and submitted to a Seattle-based magazine. Eventually, in 1979, he started getting some traction there. He submitted his works to the Seattle Times under the title, Nature's Way. This was published weekly. This was a great start for Gary, but he needed to increase his income. So, during an, a vacation to San Francisco, he got an idea to pitch his work to the San Francisco Chronicle. Much to his surprise, they purchased the strip and promoted it for syndication, renaming it The Far Side. Um, in its first appearance in the Chronicle, its, its first appearance in the Chronicle was January 1st, 1980. That was a great year, let me tell you. <laughs> Larson was so thrilled that the Chronicle picked up his work that it didn't bother him that they changed the name. Gary was quoted, they could have called it Revenge of the Zucchini People, for all I cared. He just didn't care, but he was so excited that they picked it up. And he did this for, um, he did this until January 1st of 1995. So that's when he just started, he, he thought it had run its course. 
and um, he stopped doing these these um, these cartoons for the paper. So you know he had a nice little run. Uh, he created this whole, whole ecosystem, and um, it, it's really neat. Um, I find it fascinating. So I did. I, I pulled some of these cartoons. They're they're really hilarious. Um, What are you going to tell your dad? You're riding horses in a tractor horse and the trunk went up and down. <laughs> um, this one, deer in the woods. Deer has a target on his stomach and he says, bummer of a birthmark house. <laughs> that was the shirt that I had actually. I was like, that was a cool kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, you get the point. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, four boxes at each school like we haven't had in years past, okay? In those boxes, we're going to have this information, we're going to have handouts that you can um, show the kids, we're going to have some books that you can, because he, he had some nice collection of books that we're going to have in there, um, so you can do that. And then now what, you can show them that. Um, present that to them. There are some YouTube videos out there. Um, some of them are kind of old and kind of boring, not really uh, kids would really be interested in. Um, but there are some, if you want to listen to some, some YouTube videos to kind of get your mind around the artist and who he was, quiet spoken guy, kind of a quirky guy. Um, but then what I want to do is I want to keep this very simple. In the box, you're going to have card stock, you know, uh, like we've had in years past. It'll be a spiral bound of some sort where the, the paper, you rip it out. And then um, in there, there's going to be some nice markers. I want this to kind of be a pen and ink type exercise, okay? We've got these nice markers here um, that are going to be in the boxes. Different colors, um, you know, the kids can also use the markers from their school boxes if they want, they can use crayons, whatever, it just doesn't matter. Um, and what I want to do is, I'm gonna read this. The project should be simple and fun for the students. Have the students tap into their funny side. Show them the examples of the cartoons written and illustrated by Gary Larson for ideas. Have them come up with their own original comic strip that they will write and illustrate in the same single panel cartoon style. That's a really important part of this. It's not a, a comic strip like uh, Jim Davis or Garfield or somebody would, would do. It's a single panel cartoon. And that's what I want them to really pay attention to. Um, they can write and illustrate jokes or write and illustrate a funny moment in their lives. Maybe something funny happened uh, you know, to a parent or sibling. You know, we always remember something hilarious that happened. Uh, maybe it's funnier now than it was back then. But, you know, those types of things I want to, to for them to cue off of. Um, you know, if they have an interest in an animal or to personify an animal in some way, you know, just there's no wrong answer here. Uh, anything will work. Um, they are to write and draw on the artistic paper that will be in the lesson box. So use the markers um, and, you know, have fun and enjoy the world created by Gary Larson. Um, also, too, if they, they're going to need to write something, well, not necessarily, but if they do choose to write something or a joke, just let them freehand it. You know, don't worry about the spelling because sometimes if they misspell, it actually makes it funnier. So, so let them do it entirely. And if they say, well, how do you spell this? You know, say, well, sound it out and spell it how, how you think it should be. So let them have their pure creativity and, and let them go on this. But again, the single format is the key here, okay? And then and have them go at it. And that, that's everything. Any questions, concerns on this project? It's going to be very easy. Okay, so uh, great question. So what will happen is, is we schedule with the teachers, um, you know, your day in the classroom. And usually you will have a 
another volunteer from the Art Masterpiece program that will go to the classroom with you, okay? And the teacher is there, there might be a, a classroom aide there, but you, you're gonna wanna really, um, you know, lead it with the Art Masterpiece volunteers. And you will be doing it with the entire classroom. So what usually happens is they have, you know, th they'll give you some time to set it up. So you might have five or 10 minutes or whatever it is to set it up if they're coming in from recess or, you know, wherever they're coming from. And I would just get everything laid out as quickly as you can in an organized fashion. You know, put a piece of paper at everybody's desk, throw some markers, um, and then the teacher will give you, you know, open up the floor to, to you guys, and then you'll just kind of start the lesson, and you'll teach. But, you know, keep it simple. You know, don't get into the weeds of, you know, the, the, too much about the artist. Just kind of breeze over it, some of the high points. Um, and then really show them the cartoon and get them talking about it. And then usually you do that in a gathering like this and on the carpet or something in the, in the main area in the classroom. And then you just kind of walk around and assist. And you know, I need markers, I need green, I need red. And then you just, you, you just kind of take care of their needs uh, in that matter. So it's fairly, fairly easy. It can be, it can be crazy, but um, I found that if you have everything set up really before the kids get in there, uh, it, it really helps. So it'll be situational though. But that's that's kind of how it goes. Any other questions? Another first timer, how do you recommend kind of closing it up? Like do you have people to share what they made or um, you know, that's a great question too. Yeah, I don't think we have any a lot of hobbies on that. Oh, I think yeah, I feel like maybe So um, really what we do, so that's kind of how we handle the project for all of those that are new. Uh, back it up. Um, if your kid is in the classroom, you're going to want to um, reach out to the, to the teacher and say, hey, we're from the Art Masterpiece program. Nine times out of ten, they're going to know exactly who you are and what you're doing. And, and then you're going to schedule a day that works um, with that teacher, okay? Um, and then um, you're going to, th there should be, we have them organized by class, right? So there's going to be a list of people who can help. And then, so all of that information is published and available. So then what you'll want to do is you'll want to get with somebody in the class. It could be two or three. I think if you get a ton of people, um, it can be a little much, but, uh, you know, that's to your discretion. So you're going to want to get as many people that, that can be in that class on that day and, and just work with the teacher on signing that day. And then they'll assign a time. The teacher will be, well, we come back from recess at X time. That's a great time to do it. So we'll just work those details out with the teacher. Now, you go through the process, like I just said, and then at the end of it, there are, you know, I like to take some photos. Now, you've got to be very careful because some children in the classroom are not allowed to have their photos taken. And you can't, like, publish them or do anything. So you've got to be kind of careful about that. The teachers will know who those children are. And they can help you. But I usually take a couple of photos, walk around and take the photos while they're doing it. And then when the kids finish, I usually like to take a finished photo um, of a few. But then... Um, what we've done in years past is there are areas in the hall that you can actually post or you can hang them up. So I usually, you know, like they're presented here, hang your pictures up in the hall so that the school can see them. Now, if they're, if you're doing a painting, uh, this one, this one's going to be perfect for just hanging it up immediately. That way there'll be nothing on, you know, it'll be out of the way. It'll be on the, on the walls. If you're doing a painting, um, sometimes the teacher will say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll let them dry and then hang them up so they'll, they can execute that. Or I've even had it where the teachers just, they let them dry and then they just send them home with the kids. Okay, so it, it happens both ways. Ideally, we want this artwork hanging in the school. 
okay, for X amount of time, and then the teachers will take it down and, and send it home with the kids. And two, you know, I, it's like a tragedy sometimes to see, but I've seen kids do great work. All these materials that we're using are like acid-free paper. We try to do uh, mark like these markers. They are archival type markers, alcohol-based, and they will last. And, you know, we, <laughs> I love when the kids go home and it's like a piece that they can hang up in the house, get framed and hang up. But unfortunately, I've seen it where they come home and they're rolled and, and you got to take them to Westlake Conservatives to get them. You know, <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things where you try to have them take care of it if it's a really good piece or what have you. So uh, that's, that's really the gist of how it goes. But I like to see them hung up on the wall for the school parents to see. And usually they cycle. We'll do four of these this year, so quarterly they'll cycle and there'll be a new um, show of every artist that we do. Yeah, so um, so the art <laughs> so the art supplies there is it's the it's the closet. What is, how would I describe it? You go, you go in and left. It's like the old locker. It's like a sketchy room next to the gym. That's where it is. Um, that's where it is. And then in State Street, you go down um, the first floor. Right. So you come. You come out of the office, and that first hall that goes all the way down, you go all the way to the end, and it's in the, one of those empty rooms. Where the third grade are. It, yeah, where the third grade are. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, so that's where they are. If you need help, uh, the people in the school will know where the closets are, for sure. Uh, or some of them will. Um, if not, you can you know, make a phone call or whatever, but they're very easy to find. Um, and then you'll see the bins. There are bins that are, there'll be four of them in, in each school. And then you will just take the bin to the classroom at the time, and everything you need will be in there. Now, very important make sure that you leave the bin as good as the condition as it was when you found it. Um, I will be checking, I'm going to be doing the bins this year. Um, I will be checking on them periodically to make sure that everything is, is properly stocked and in good order. But, you know, if we're doing a painting or something like that, please make sure all of the brushes are washed um, and properly put away. If they're wet, don't put them in the plastic bin. You know, all these things that we've seen. Um, just, just make sure it's really nice and set up for the next person, okay? Um, we'll restock things, make sure everything's restocked so you're not going in there and there's an empty pad of paper in there. So but we'll make sure that's taken care of. You won't have to worry about that. Um, but again, just make sure it's, it's in good order. Any other questions, concerns? Yeah, this sounds a little more like chaperone than instruction. How long would you expect us to spend in between the, the class? Well, you know, it's, you know, short enough to be interesting, but long enough to cover the subject. Um, I, you know, that's just kind of how you're feeling. Sometimes the kids are crazy. Sometimes the kids are perfect, and they just sit there and they'll listen. Um, they will also have questions, or they will make lots of comments, or, you know, they'll tell you, like, random stuff. Um, so you just kind of like keep the keep it going, but you should, you know, you really want to have them doing the art for at least forty minutes. Um, usually, you have about an hour. Usually, is an hour that the the teachers will allow, but you want to you want to have them doing the work for forty minutes at least. You can work a lot of the lesson in while they're doing the art. Yeah. So if you totally. have little kids and you really yep.
But you want to kind of move through it. Those, there was one time uh, we were doing a project in college together, and we were doing the artist John Singer Sargent. And I started the presentation, and we had 30 minutes. And I like the detail. I'm animating when I'm talking, and this, that, and the other. And literally, the I, I, I had just said, and John Singer Sargent was born. And he goes, you guys got five minutes. <laughs> she was so upset. And, and we come out of the class, and she goes, well, thank God he was born. <laughs> well done, you idiot. So it was, you know, so just kind of move it along and get through your presentation. And like Kelly said, you know, real, you, you can teach while they're doing their thing. Right. Yeah, and the other thing. Or worst case scenario, I'm just saying, well, find one that you like and copy it. You know, I mean, that's like the worst case scenario. But at least they're participating, and they and they and they get it, and they get to do it. So, just be creative. If in your mind you have a feeling that, or you think how it's going to go when you're in the classroom, it won't go that way. <laughs> so just kind of, just kind of be, be ready to to just kind of, you know. Sidestep and do whatever you gotta do. Thanks. Yes. So our ideas in kindergarten are gonna be fully into telling the stories and, mm -hmm. and talking about it and drawing about it, but not being able to write about it. In their thinking, it'd be okay if they want you to write the words and or if you. Uh, yeah, you know, I I think I think for the kindergartners, um, I think for the kindergartners that is okay. Um, you know, there are, there are some that you, that he did that there was no words. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so if they want to, to do something like this, this guy's working on a missile and the other scientist behind him has a, has a bag that he's about to pop <laughs> over his shoulder. So they don't have to use words or tell a joke. Um, in the thing, but if they need help uh, and there's no way around it, absolutely. You know, for the for the young youngsters. Mm -hmm. um, but if they can try to write it, oh, I mean that's oh, super yeah. cool too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean all the misspellings and everything that just makes it better. Right. But yeah, I, I would say you know use your discretion on it. There is no wrong answer, honestly. Mm -hmm. As long as they have fun and they understand the artist, that's all we're at. You know, there's there's no wrong way to do this. Um, um, so that being said, yeah, that's a that's a great point. Practice sheet on the sheet paper. Well, I can see here's the thing: if they start practicing, then they're going to eat up their time, and then they're not going to finish. So I would say uh, you will have some of these that you know, a couple in the class. If they really mess up, give them another sheet of paper. It's fine. Uh, but you can't, they can't keep doing it because these it's materials are expensive. Like the second one gets one, yeah. they all want to have a second one. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, flip it over. Yeah. You know, we have, I forget which one we did last with this sort of thing. We just had them do it with pencils and the yeah. kids that struggled and then pull yeah. it over in pen and whatever. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's absolutely right. Yeah. And I was always like, when the kids are totally, totally stuck, I found myself doing like individual brainstorming. Yeah. Right? Not giving them ideas, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, couldn't get any suggestions. Exactly. You guys have kindergarten on up. They can't do any kindergarten. It's a very exactly. different project than the fifth graders that have the teacher often wants to listen and learn the facts and 
Yeah, they're, I mean, they're pretty but easy to steer. But you have fifth graders, and they can just brainstorm, right? Yeah, depending on the kids. Correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. And that's a nice way to handle that. It's a that. helpful way to learn in the room. Absolutely nice yeah. way to handle that. Um, there was another question back here. Question? Yeah, I was going to say maybe they should say pencil first, and then... Yeah, you can, you can do that, but again, the problem with that is, is that they just pencil draw, and then it's over, and then they haven't completed the entire project. I want them to, I want that color on there. I want them to really try to finish this project, okay? Uh, but yeah, they can start with pencil. That's fine. That's fine. That's no big deal. Do you have any objections if we cut a mistake and then we just have a smaller piece of paper? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> We have no rules. They're not getting great graded. <laughs> yeah, they, no, they're, no, they're gonna have fun. Like it's one of those things where it's it should be a loose environment. It should be fun, exciting, and not pressure. So yeah, you can cut, you can make it round, you can do whatever. It just doesn't matter. Just tell them they can. You know, it doesn't matter how they do it. Um, but yeah, I, I like them to use the full size if possible. I don't like seeing. You know, a little piece of art in the middle of a nice piece of paper. Um, but again, they can do with the paper any way they want. Any way, it can be turned. It can you know, be turned whatever way. Whatever it can be trimmed in any shape or whatever. It just doesn't matter. But um, just, I, I just want that like that single. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You will have you will have the markers. You will have the examples. You'll have the books. And just kind of take it and throw it out, and, and it'll it'll get around. Um, so yes, everything you will need is in that bin. It's like Hello Fresh. Everything you need <laughs> for that meal is right there. With the kids, if you want to throw them mm -hmm. into like a document or like a PowerPoint slide yes. or something, and email it to the teacher beforehand, they'll often then like have it ready to go up on the projector, so that you're not like trying to do that in the Correct. moment. That was helpful. That is that is actually a great point. Thanks for bringing that up. If listen, I'm old school. I just like to hold posters and pictures up, and then kind of talk about it and, and read about it and show books. If you want to uh, find pictures that are online or something that you can project, you know, all these classrooms have these whiteboards, um, and they will the teacher will pull up, if you want to do a YouTube video and you find one that's kid friendly, please listen and watch it in its entirety before you project it and play it in the classroom. Um, you know, his, his stuff, was, it could be a little, uh, you know, on, on edge. So just make sure that anything you play, you fully listen to and watch so that there are no um, explicit, you know, things in the video. Um, but yes, feel free to do it any way you want to do it. Even for you, there's no wrong way to present the art. If you're a person that works better, better with media or social media or something like that, um, use it to your advantage. Help, use it to help you teach the best that you can teach. You know, again, I'm old school. I do it my way and you do it your way. So yes, for sure. That's a, that's a great point. Say what you see with that. We did. It was Patchy. Oh, you're back there. It was you originally that said something about music, which was really fun. It was you. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, during my lesson, my piano solo hour, I'm, I'm, um, Miss Katrina Zeff, Kelly Barnes, and Whitney. Um, we. I think it's really important to play music of any kind. Like if we did Monet, we played French music. Um, Shell service. Also, I mean, all, that was different, right, right. all different kinds of music is nice for the kids. I just put it on my iPhone, um, and I usually keep the lesson for like an hour, one hour, and then give yourself 15 minutes to clean up. Um, one of the most important things is um, I'm going to send out a Remind app, so make sure everybody downloads that. All of our correspondence this year is going to be through Remind. So if you haven't already gotten that, make sure you talk to me so I can get it. We have about 71 volunteers, so it's awesome. The program's been since 2015, and we've been so many neat artists, and the kids love it, and um, there's a nice Instagram page that I made for Skinny Atlas Art Masterpiece, so download that, and then you'll get a better idea of like some of the 
really neat projects that we've done with the kids. Um, and it's also a beautiful time to get into the classroom and see the cast of characters that your kids go to school with <laughs> and to see how excited they get about, about making art. And we don't have enough of it in the schools. And we do have a new art teacher and there's this beautiful gallery that these girls have taken so much time to help put together. So it's nice that we get to meet here this year and not everywhere. And um, our next artist is gonna be John Barra. And we're gonna do a neat project that correlates to the museum. So we're so happy you guys are here. And um, just make sure that I have all of your information. And then when, once you leave tonight, you need to contact, I would have one person like a chain text between like everybody in Mrs. Harris' class because my daughter's in Mrs. Harris. I already made the date with the teacher because I figured we'd get it going. And she gave me 55 minutes on a Friday before they go to recess. I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take exactly 55 minutes. But then send it to the rest of the volunteers and say, this is the times that the teacher gave us that we can meet. If not everybody can come to that lesson, then don't make it hard for the other volunteers because so many people are working and everybody's very busy um, and go to the next lesson. But So we'll have four different artists and Ms. Caitlin. Yep. So will you figure it out who's volunteering yes. for my class? Yep. yep, it will go into your Remind. Remind. So there's not going to be email. You'll have um, everything in Remind. You'll have your file. I'll give a list of every single person that's in um, that's a volunteer this year with their cell phone, not their email, and you can talk to them either like in your own little private chat. Say there's you know three people, five people in your group, or even just two. And then if anybody is solo in their class and they need help, we have wonderful um, people from the community that will come in and help. And Whitney and Kelly and Katrina and I will jump in and, and help us too. So. Um, so is there going to be a spreadsheet again so mm -hmm. you can see the, the names of the other? You'll see a spreadsheet and the only thing that I'll need is um, for you to tell me when are you going to go into the classroom so that I can give it to the two secretaries. Mm -hmm. And so they know to expect you and, um, and that's just a little, that's why I'm trying to put it all in my mind so I'm not getting texts and everything from different places. And if anybody doesn't know, this is Barbara Delmonico. She's a beautiful artist here in town. She does all these incredible landscapes. My godmother. <laughs> That's from the club. So don't be mean. The kids love that. And actually we love our grandparent volunteers. They, you know, they're so excited to be there. And I think the children are so proud when they get to come.